Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is another edition of Tan Talks. I'm joined by Squirrely Matt. We're here to recap season one of Peacemaker. As a matter of fact, here's here's the thing. If you haven't watched the series yet. Don't listen. <laughs> don't listen. Yeah, yeah. Or, we're going to go into it. Yeah, we're getting into it. So we're, we're going to go, we're going to sort of go through these. In the first episode, it was five months after um, the Suicide Squad. Peacemaker gets out of the hospital and he's really shocked to find out he's not going back to prison. Come to find out he's still in Task Force X. Yeah. And has himself a nice little um, hookup at a bar and realizes that the woman he's hooking up with is super strong and he has to like obliterate her to survive. Activate Sonic Boom! Yeah, I didn't even understand exactly what the, how, what triggered the attack. She saw the dossier. He took the dossier. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah, and she was right. reading the dossier, and that's why yeah. she attacked. And so it she, just knew, goes, she knew what he was all about now. That's right. Right. And it's funny. This is a great setup to show just how much of a screw-up he is. Uh -huh. But we also meet Eagly. <gasps> oh, my God. He's, he's hugging me. I love Eagly. Oh my God. When that thing hugs him the first time, if you, I'm not crying, you're crying. Like, come on. Yeah. This is fucking amazing. Episode one is a great setup to what we're going to see. And it really shows us that the pace that we got from the Suicide Squad is going to be continued on. We know yes. what we're getting. The days of the super dark DC universe is over. And that's not bad at all. No. Everything in that scene with that girl told you what we were going to get i mean i'll tell you the intro told you everything you were going to get minus right. the violence well and right. not even that there was there was still even that but that scene summed it all up we had humor some some music some character development with you know seeing different sides of him and then this epic gruesome battle in He's their fucking smart. underwear and then that big boom with the shock helmet at the end like oh, welcome to so peacemaker right right so the second episode continues off at the first one i think this episode kind of looks like a lot of the the patterns that you see in tv shows and this second episode worried me because it's like okay we're starting to get to a formula the dad that we know is a jerk is getting arrested here's our villain and here's the cop the cops getting into it the cops gonna know now this is our secondary antagonist because the cop is doing their job and blah 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 so this was when i was starting to get worried man well yeah and, and i and i hear you fully so i remember episode one was very much here's peacemaker here's where he's at Here's what you're going to get. Bang, 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 bang. And you loved it. So episode two is all about setting up the new characters, right? Even right. though you got glimpses of a few of them in the first one. The first episode one was all Peacemaker. Yep. This one is who else is in this game? Who else do we need to be aware of at any kind of level? And bring them in while they're all starting to build trust for each other in different degrees as well. So it was, an, it was a sl I think yeah, it was a slower episode. Still carried the show really well. But a lot of, like you said, almost moving into a formula. Episode three, Peacemaker gets his first real mission. He has to assassinate a United States senator that's suspected to be a <laughs> butterfly. Now, this episode, anything that I was worried about in episode two just got completely obliterated. Yeah, out the window. What you end up finding out later on makes this episode way more disturbing. Because you find out that Senator's whole family are butterflies. Those poor kids and what they went through to become butterflies. <laughs> Oh my God. Right? When you, oh yeah. Oh. When you find out what the pain and agony that humans go through when these oh. butterflies take over, like yeah. they're drilling into the brain. They're oh not just clenching on and it's over. It, it's a very brutal process. Yeah. But then of course, this is the episode where Vigilante joins the team because yeah. he just shows up oh, i love when he's like hiding behind the garbage cans and like <laughs> like he's he's just like wants to be with his best friend and uh doesn't give a fuck and and i think this is where we really find out how truly nuts vigilante is because peacemaker pauses when it comes to taking out the kids yeah oh not vigilante vigilante don't care yeah. he takes out the kids the wife and just misses getting golf yeah well i mean this is also uh 
an over, I don't know, a missed opportunity or missed thought from, from the whole crew there. What's his name? Uh, Mern and company. When, when they gave him this assignment, they assumed he was this cold blood assassin, which he has been in the past, but the guy's been through hell. You know, they're, they're letting him out. He's refining his life clearly. And then they say, give him no information, go here, kill a Senator and kill those kids. Right. I don't know. That's, I mean, vigilante, like I said, full blown sociopath, uh, not peacemaker. And I think yeah. it was him killing Rick flag in the suicide squad that really brought about that change i think yeah and they seem like a pretty smart group so to miss something like that or not have enough awareness that he might not be up to this i think is on them so you can't blame him for for how he reacted because they pulled him right out of the hospital and threw him right into this mess and then of course judo master just showed up and beat the <laughs> hell out of everybody <laughs> And then who incapacitates Judo Master? Economos. He's always there when you need him. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> At the end, we see Peacemaker keep the butterfly and put him in a jar. Yeah. You know, because that's what you did with lightning bugs. That's what you do with intergalactic bugs. Cool. Yeah. That whole that whole scene, too, with like the torture and everything, a vigilante. Oh, like, that was insane. He's like, he can handle it. Don't you worry. <laughs> No, I really can't. <laughs> so episode four, Peacemaker finds out that his dad was framed. He tries to go in and talk to his dad, but his dad is way too pissed off. Vigilante gets himself arrested so that he can kill a white dragon. <laughs> which you is gotta hilarious. Love his friendship loyalty there, eh? Judo Master escapes, and it's absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Hardcore bails out Vigilante while he's in the prison. We actually find out, and this is in this fourth episode, you already called it, that we start to see a little bit more about Peacemaker. We learn yeah. more about why he's traumatized, how his childhood traumatized him. And I really think that that's where the show is still fun. It's still amazing, but it is no longer just an action yeah. comedy. This in its own right is kind of a character profile in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah, you, well, absolutely. I mean, I think without this element, it just it, it, it had the risk of staying pretty flat and becoming boring very quick. You need this depth of his character. What is he clinging on to? Why is he still wanting the appreciation or, or, or sauna from his dad, who is clearly just a demented human? But he mm -hmm. just he he desires that. And there's definitely some heavy mental and obviously physical abuse from past that's just got him trapped inside this world. And I love that they explore that because it, it comes across very real. Absolutely. We really feel Peacemaker's pain. As much as I gave crap to John Cena, I think this is the point where he carved out his own place. Yeah. Um, A lovable idiot is kind of what he is. Exactly. Episode five, Monkey Dory. This is where we see Avi Smith getting out of jail. He flips the script and sends them on to Peacemaker. Yeah. Even though he's like, I'm no snitch, but... I'm sending the cops after you, but then you are a snitch, sir. Yeah. Then we start to find out a lot more about these butterflies, how they get their food. This is when we find out that Mern is a butterfly. Yes. Well, and it's funny because I remember that scene. It's right at the end of the episode, right? And the second she picked up the helmet, I pieced it together. I'm like, oh, shit, Mern's a butterfly, right? <laughs> I, I knew what the helmet was. I'm like, I, but up until that moment, it hadn't even crossed my mind. Um, right. And I was just, how is this going to play out? And I'm worried, oh, no, Adebayo is going to get turned into a butterfly. But then, you know, we find out Mern is actually a good guy. Yeah. And that Goff was actually trying to dominate the earth and blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. Well, they even that, even that, like when they kicked off what episode six there and, and you wake up and, and she's lying on the ground and he explains, I'm a butterfly. I'm good. And then Hardcore walks up. I, I feel like I'm not alone that I thought, oh, my God, Hardcore is a butterfly. I as did, well. too, because. She seemed like if anyone was going to be on a, a butterfly, it had been her. Yeah, and they didn't make so that clear romantic. either. And then in this episode, of course, we find out that, you know, Goff is released from the jar thanks to Vigilante breaking it. <laughs> and then we lose Detective Song. Detective Song becomes Goff. This is when Adebayo actually betrays Peacemaker by leaving this diary in his trailer. Yeah. And this throws a monkey wrench into their friendship. Now she was so conflicted about doing that too. She really was. And this really goes to show the conflict when family puts you in an uncomfortable situation, but yeah. also how you can choose your family. Yeah. Like had, had that scene happened like episode one or two, she'd have just 
thrown it and moved on with her day. But right. getting to know him in his messed up ways and seeing those human human moments that he delivered, you, you, you can't help but like him, right? So there's more to this guy. And she understands the trauma and understand like they all connected with it. even hardcore. You see her come around a lot as the series goes on in right. her opinion of him. And it all connects back to what his backstory is. And, and, and as they're seeing it unfold and getting to know him and the, what really made him tick. Right. And then we also see White Dragon is coming for him. Wait. All right. So episode seven, Peacemaker is not trusting the crew now. He only trusts Vigilante and Eagly. They get with Economos <laughs> and here comes White Dragon and his people and a nice big old fight ensues. And it's actually a Vigilante that disables the armor and White Dragon's like, you're not going to kill me, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm like, Thank God he does. We don't get that conflicted. No, he just yeah. does it. So. Well, and I also feel that whole that whole battle towards the end with his dad and the crew. It almost I almost felt like maybe they did it on purpose or it was accident. I don't know, but I felt like they discredited the potential strength of the white dragon and and his crew the way they were sort of running through the forest with their heads cut off following a little blinking beep and it's like it's like oh go here no 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 go here no go like it, <laughs> it, it just made them look like idiots and i don't know if that was intentional but it, i think it, just, it was i think yeah. it was so eagerly recovers after being injured by um white dragon and at a bio who didn't believe peacemaker when he first told her that eagerly hugged him sees eagerly hug him and that's when she decides yeah I'm yeah. on board with him. So symbolic. Cause I mean, and in full circle too, because originally he told it to her and she's like, not a chance. There's no way that happened. See it. Yeah. It was like a sign to her. Like, Oh my God, he's the guy. He's the one. It's so finally our season finale at a bio contacts, her mother trying to get back up and the team just decides, you know, what, we're going in and they actually come up with a very good plan for setting Ish. up the boom helmets and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And of course, it doesn't work out because there's no way Eagly is going to follow those complex directions. Uh, well, sorry. and then you, you went too far because remember, at first they're like, "We'll float it over there." Oh, right, with right. the anti gravity helmet, and then <laughs> <laughs> like, those are some Leo, those Leo. are some very good ideas in yeah. theory. Did you say activate anti gravity helmet? Shit, <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Everything starts going off, and then. Things start to get really hardcore. Yeah. Hardcore vigilante and peacemaker going in and they're getting things done. Peacemaker pulls out his Captain America shield. And it's Where did he get his shield from? He never had a shield. That's what I want to know. And why has he only used it now? And then the butterflies start to take over and vigilante gets shot. Hardcore gets shot. And I was like, okay, she's dead. She's spitting blood. It's yeah. over. Yeah. And then Adebayo comes in and starts kicking ass or wings and taking names. I did not see that coming and I no. love what I saw. It was so good. That was that was her moment, right? That was her <sighs> moment. And then things don't go as, as it seems. You know, she gets on the helmet. But then Peacemaker and Goff have this moment where Goff is explaining, look, we're just trying to stop your planet from happening, what happened to ours, just by any means necessary. And yeah. there was a moment that I'm like, you're winning me over. And then he's like, yeah, no, that's yeah. not going to happen. It, it crossed my mind for a moment, but then I remembered how much time the butterfly had spent with him. She knows his vulnerability, his she weakness. She she manipulated him. Like it looked like he was there. I'm like, there's no way they're gonna let this happen. And right. I'm, glad it, I'm glad it played out the way it did. Right. And then of course he launches at a bio into the cat. <laughs> she walks in like drunk, like barely even knowing yeah, who she is. Like she, she's girl, still recovering. The poor girl has a very, very, very bad <laughs> concussion brewing. And then he launches her into a cow. <laughs> Kills Song. I mean, he kills Lot and then destroys Song's body. But yeah, but then he he, he spares the goth butterfly again. Yeah. Which is crazy to me. It's and like then, they connected in some weird way. I don't get it, but... But here's my favorite part of the series. The Justice League shows up and they're late. Yeah. And Peacemaker just gives them the business. Of course, at the end, you know, Peacemaker has... um. Goff with him, Goff and Eagly with him, but he's still being haunted by his father. Adebayo 
outs her mother, but we have such a great setup because they already announced there's going to be a season two. Yeah. Which I'm all there for. Oh, 100%. At this point, you're in. Hook, line, and oh, sink. Right? Like, oh, my God. James Gunn, whatever you do, take my money. Give <laughs> everything DC related to James Gunn. Let James Gunn be the Kevin Feige of DC. And I guarantee you, DC will be way better off. Yeah. <laughs> so for the uninitiated, the Plotaholics, we have a rating system. Zero shots, we got through it with no issues. It does what it needs to do. Five shots, it's the worst of the worst, and you need to put yourself in an alcohol-induced coma to get through it. So, Matt, you're, you're you're the guest on this. This is your first time around. What do you? What rating do you give Peacemaker as a whole? I'd probably give it a one. And this is why I find this system hilarious, and and it, I get it. But surely this is where I'm laughing. I almost want to drink more, but <laughs> I'm not going to. Right? So, the ridiculousness what makes you want to get more right? drunk because <laughs> it'll make it more fun. <laughs> yeah, but no, this was fantastic. I mean, John Cena delivered. The show was a blast. The action was there. I love that violent action. It's so fun to watch. It delivered, man, on all levels. Uh, there's a couple minor balls, but that's why I'm I, I'm giving it the one. But no, it, it was a high for me. I loved it. I can't wait for season two. I'll agree. The misses were very, very few and far between. I feel like I have to give it a zero shot rating because everything came together. The, the, right. the laughs, the emotion, the music that, oh my God, the opening dance number, it never gets old. I'm finding <laughs> new things with the yeah. dances all the time. Do, do you find that every time you watch it, you focused in on different people? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So James Gunn definitely hits a home run with this. Cannot wait for season two. So with that being said, we're going to put a pin in this one matt where can we legally stalk you on the intro web <laughs> i'll give first shout out to our show so if you're a letter county fan or you just want to hang out with some good old folks and listen to us ramble check us out anywhere on social it's really simple it's at produce stand pod and then me personally i mean you can find me at my main place for hanging out and slinging nonsense is twitter so it's at the dude north is my handle so please check me out you're gonna see matt again in one month when we start with Moon Knight. Yeah, so buddy. that being said, I'm Brian Tan. This has been Tan Talk.